Bill and it's here. Good morning to you. Morning, Joe. Now, um, Owen thought that there would be shrieks and uh, some violence being meted out by Joe Schmidt in the video session this morning, that it would have been a, a, a bit of a video nasty. Would it have been that bad? Would there have been a bit of like... I don't think he has too much time to, to, to kind of really focus on all the negatives and try and dissect them. Some of them are down to obviously poor execution and players making mistakes and I think he'll certainly highlight some stuff and say you know rather than going too too much individual he'll collective look this is what we did wrong as a group and the kickoff receipts were a big concern you know um, line was a concern defensively a couple of mistakes for sure but I think um, the intensity will be a bit different next week for obvious reason but I think the line out would worry me and um, but it's difficult. I, I kind of said it before the game, and I'm, I'm not the expert here. Everyone has a good opinion on it, and I think it was the perfect performance for in preparation for next week. Um, lots to work lots, on. Yeah. Lots to work on. You still get, um, you still get yeah, the Yeah, look, as a player in the dressing room, you they probably went off to feel a little bit frustrated. I'm glad to have it out of the way, and glad if you're still standing. Obviously, Sean O'Brien is the one that, yeah. that you know picks up another really disappointing injury for him, but I think disappointed that they've got through and they've won by 11 points playing poorly making a lot of mistakes dominating possession I think the second half was a half was a lot better um, they brought a bit more of an aggression and fight and uh, maybe you're waiting for it to happen a little bit in the first half it'll be totally different this week Joe. still Argentina um, quite able to find pockets of space yeah well they're so a good side and when I say it'll be totally different this week that doesn't mean we'll win and it will just turn up and win I mean the level of intensity the preparation um, if, you remember the back to the, just, if you remember back to the World Cup, um, Argentina beat us by going wide, wide, and our defensive out wide was a disaster, and uh, we were like, oh, we've got to overreact to that. But they killed us, like, beside rooks and, like, little inside balls whenever they were making ground against us on um, Saturday night. Did we, do we have a defence that is weak on the inside? Um, I think we, we, we showed uh, we were a little too porous on Saturday, for sure. Um, I think the scramble defence was was good. In fairness, the the one the one kind of glaringly obvious one was when when they scored a try in the corner and Rory Best is your last defender and inside him is Keane Healy. Now that is stuff that um, you get very really punished uh, against New Zealand. They'll do they'll just keep exploiting that and I think the transition needs to be a lot better. It's kind of down to energy levels and enthusiasm as well, and maybe just a real kind of sharp focus. Which is all the same issue, really. Yeah, you see, I think they got, from that initial, from that try, there was a, an uncharacteristic kind of lapse through the middle, I think, between Aki and Sexton. And then Argentina are very good when they get into kind of open field play, blo broken, broken play a little bit, and Ireland's transition was just really poor. So then when you think, you know, you're... Henshaw's not there, Ringrose is not there, Will Addison is playing at 13, maybe is he not as vocal and as dominant? But I just think the transition I'm talking about in defence is switching from, if you're caught on the inside, switching with slower forwards and putting them back in and getting to the outside. I just think that was like, my God, Rory Best is our last defender and I could see it up high at the game on Saturday. Um, and there wasn't really anyone trying to bust a gut to get back out. So I don't think that kind of stuff will happen. But I think if if New Zealand and New Zealand get a lot of line breaks, and in fairness, you have to accept that sometimes, and you have to scramble, and it's that organisation really quickly in the space of two or three seconds, which will possibly save you. Um, so if 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 we don't get better at that, but I think some of it is down to attitude. New Zealand in the back of the mind yeah. as well. I think they've had New Zealand in the back of their mind since. The start of the year, really. Well, after the Grand Slam. Well, we all have. But immediately after so that, we're like, kind of we're yeah. buying into that as well. So you can imagine what it's like as a player. You try, of course, you do the opposite, and you say, "Let's not have New Zealand anywhere in our mind." But it's just lingering a little bit, and maybe it's lingering in the preparation where, and it's fully understandable. If I, if I, like I said, if I'm in the squad last week, I don't want us to to show our best hand. Yeah. I, I want us to get through New Zealand, Argentina. Keep it pretty simple, um, but I think we made one probably mistake is we probably tried to go a bit wide, wide ourselves, and then when we were a bit more direct, okay, we had to work a little bit harder, uh, but we wore them down a little bit. And I think it'll be actually physically, this that team hasn't played since together since the Grand Slam 
victory against England effectively because there was a good few changes in, in the summer. Yeah. Um, but I mean the core group together. Um, so I think there was, I think they get a lot out of it as regards match fitness and all that. And no better team to ruffle you up than Argentina. And I think some of the hits they put in were phenomenal. Lavanini, Jesus, he he was trying to behead fellas and uh, cut fellas in two. And, and he's a great player and it was legal, you know. Yeah. So it wasn't that illegal, I'm saying. But uh, Matera, some brilliant tackles. And um, so physically, the players would have been sore after the game. But they'll get a surge for this week now. It does seem that... It from what you're saying, that Ireland were a little bit rattled or uh, alert. No, I, w I, w I wouldn't say rattled. I'd say they were just a little bit off. And it's it's hard as a player on when you're there and as a group then to Change to, to get everything right. Okay, they were trying stuff and they made mistakes and they had turnovers and they were just a, a percent or two off where they needed to be. That won't be an issue this week. Their intensity level will just, no matter what happens, it'll just go through the roof. You've then got to execute and you know, play really well. But I think just that aggression, that bit of zip that you need, um, and it's hard to have it every week. You, you build the emotion. The emotion will be through the roof this week, and it's hard to have that emotion high against Argentina. Argentina are a good side. There is no doubt about that. They're very dangerous if you allow them play. We're better, and we show that we're better by winning by 11 points, yeah. playing poorly. Yeah, uh, a couple of things. Um we should talk about who the second row is going to be. It's interesting that Ian Henderson was out doing some of the media in the aftermath of the game, and yet the team looked like we were more proficient in the lineout when Devon Toner was there. Yeah. So what happened? Like, how do you? You've two trains of thought here. Is one that Henderson gets another crack at it and worry best, and they fix the lineout, and you know, will it be as bad as Saturday? Probably not. It's a bit of rustiness, timing issues. I think a lot of the papers and a lot of the uh, people are talking about Rory Best and he's under pressure now. He, of course he's under pressure, but it's not all his fault of throwing in the line out. Some of it is down to Ian Henderson's calls. Some of it is down to lifting, timing, um, not getting up quick enough. Like there was one call that um, I think Ian Henderson made and right to... Henderson's making these calls. He's making the line out calls. You know, you have to have someone running the line out and he's running... Why is running. Peter Manny not doing that? Well, yeah, I think he possibly... <laughs> He, but he, Peter Romani doesn't make the calls either in Munster, you know. So ideally, it's a second row. Back rows can do it if they particularly if, if they they're world class. If they stand at half lineups. back, yeah. Do you know, well, he's worst, world class at going in the air. That doesn't mean he's world class at calling him. He could be, and he's well capable of calling. But I think you want to impose and give that responsibility to your second row in an ideal world. You do want to do yeah. that. And I think Ian Henderson has shown. Look, he's he ran the lineup really well in Twickenham. Um, he called lineouts for the British and Irish lines, um, and you want a good dominant second row. So, listen, Paul O'Connell is probably the best. Victor Matfield was the, you know, these guys are the, the best that's ever been running lineouts, and they make mistakes in some games where just two or three lineouts, they got it wrong and they hold their hand up. You try and fix that stuff during the week, and they will, will fix that. So, the other kind of train of thought is you bring Devin Toner straight in, who has that experience, who's of his height advantage and when he came on he kind of got up between those Argentinian jumpers and just dominated the air. He was also, it was him and Tyg Furlong who were lifting Peter Manny at one point and you're like, well look Defensively, at that. Defensively, yeah, in, like, in, the, in that shortened line where he won, won the ball cl clean, yeah, so, yeah, and his general play around the field um, was good, so it could go either way. It's probably more in Toner's, uh, it's leaning towards Toner now to, to win that primary possession. Because I think having Henderson maybe come off the bench with that impact when it in the last twenty minutes, where you know sometimes it can go helter skelter when you're playing the All Blacks. Yeah, and is Rory Best safe from general play? And uh, he's safe this week. He needs to probably play better, and he'll admit that himself. He's honest, um, so he he will have to play better. But I think collectively, you know, some of the performances were off off a little bit on Saturday. Um, Keen Healy was very good. Um, Scrum was superb. Tyg Furlong was good. Uh, James Ryan was very, very good. Dan Levy. D Levy when he was outstanding when he came on. I think Stander and O'Mahony were quiet and they probably need to impose themselves a little bit more. Like Stander had something like 20 carries and 18 tackles or 22 carries or something. He's, in fairness, he's working his socks off, but he's probably he's just not fallen where he's making line breaks at the moment. Yeah. or swatting people off and getting over the gain line regularly. So 
Um, this week, you know, they've got to deliver and bring that that kind of level, uh, a level different than they did last week. But um, so there's a lot of. I think the forwards collectively need to be a lot better, and I genuinely think they will. It sounds like you're making two changes if you're Joe Schmidt. One enforced, obviously, Levy in for O'Brien, and the other being Toner in for Henderson. I think you're making three. Rob Carney's coming straight in at full back, yeah, right? In the pack, I mean. Sorry. Yeah, in the pack. Yeah, I think so. I think you might. But look, like I said, if, if it's Ian Henderson and, Dan, and James Ryan again, you know, so they have a bit of work in the bank. Like, they, mm. you know, you go back to Twickenham and think how good those two were mm. and how strong and aggressive they were. But. What about Twickenham on Saturday? How much do you read into the Ritalik factor when it comes to selecting your two Ireland boys? Does Toner have a better impact at perhaps stopping the Ritalik factor or was his performance on Saturday in London just out of this world and something that you can't really plan too much into? They got it right. Look, I've been thrown up in lineouts before so many times. Some you get near, some you don't get near at all. You end up winning one, getting a hand to another and then the opposition are panicking. That's where a bit of panic sets in if there's two pods going up and... And that's where you want to get the opposition line at. So Ritalik just, he got in an area where he put a lot of pressure and, and a few just went right for him. Um, the lift has got to be right, the timing of the jump and all that stuff. But look, Ritalik and Whitelock are phenomenal players. I think they're, 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 they've been the, you know, the bench setters for a number of years now. Um, and yeah, But I'm, like I said, I'm not concerned. I think it's a timing issue. Like people have this kind of myth that you have to be, you have to pick all the tall guys to have a good line out, you know. And if a guy is an inch or two smaller, that he's uh, not, not effective. Yeah. yeah, it's the lift as well, and it's yeah. timing of the throw. And and if you have a big, like you say, if you've tone or lift in Omahani, well, you're gaining an extra um, yeah. air time there as well. So Paul O'Connell and Dunnick O'Callaghan used to lift me defensively sometimes, and you can imagine the two of them yeah. at my kneecaps or below my kneecaps because yeah. I was comfortable in the air. Like they could put me up, whereas if I lifted Paul, you know, they're actually getting me higher than I me lifting one of them. Yeah. Because I'm a bit lighter, and they're literally down around my calves, throwing me in the air. Now sometimes they didn't bring Actually. me down and I, <laughs> I remember one time in <laughs> we played Harlequins in London. They lifted me the defensive line out and Quins won it, and they just dropped me and ran away. Like and I landed on my back and I was winded for about sixty seconds, but. You know, so it's just a line. A good line out is about timing as well, and our timing was off on Saturday. And I just, I find it. Look, some of Rory's throws were a bit wobbly. He'll need to be better there, but I think collectively the unit needs to be, get their timing right. What was the defence like? Um, defensive line out or defence? Just in general? generally, like it what? was soft-ish. Yeah, and I think it improved a lot in the second half, and we just put that an awful lot of pressure on Argentina. And when they try to break out. We were hungrier, the hunt on the inside was much better. And like I say, in the first half, that was just a little bit, God, is he your man, is he my man? You know, that indecision. And that's what happened. Like Sexton and Bundyaki don't miss front-on tackles. Now, Sanchez takes the ball to the line really well and just, is he going out the back door? And he hits the front line runner and he gets through. Um, there's a bit of a scramble, a couple of phases, and they score in the corner. You don't really see Ireland conceding up the middle like that. We've been guilty of being a little bit narrow and maybe just getting yeah. caught on a width, bit of width. And this is the opposite, right? We don't get kind of, we don't soak around the, the fringes either. So, yeah, so that that's just kind of, it's down to a little bit of attitude and maybe just been a little bit off. Yeah. Um, and in terms of our the quality of our attacking play, like subbing in a 13 in the, in the warm-up, not ideal. Like particularly because Robbie Henshaw is kind of reaching that point where he's he beginning to hit the peak of his career, um, and yet you know you're not going to say that Addison had any uh, negative impact on, on how the team played, but it's just there's just a little bit of like oh we had, we're all week long this is what we expected now we've got to change yeah and if you it that's not that's that's not ideal um, and and maybe that had a little bit of a factor as well, but I think Ireland's attack a lot of it is based off really good strikes off lineouts, mm. getting into good positions where you get in behind the gain line and then you can build relentless pressure whether you know we don't usually go wide 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 all the time there's a lot of good strike plays and that's the, the game plan and the way it's structured and I think we got guilty of just being a bit lateral on Saturday and I you know when you're when you're up very high at the stadium you can see it's a great way of seeing what way teams are defending and attacking Okay, you see more at home on TV when you're seeing breakdown and right in where the ball is. 
but Argentina were just fanning out, fanning out, fanning out. So there was a lot of numbers. When Sexton was getting the ball, there was like a lot of Argentinians standing right in front of him. So they defended smartly and they were quite cunning in the way they did it. Um, I thought we needed to be a bit more direct around the fringes. Um, I think for, you know, some of the earlier pressure that led to the try off the scrum for Marmion came from a directness. Furlong makes a carry off Sexton's shoulder, gets in James Ryan a couple of carries, you know. Yeah. Um, and I just thought we got a, we drifted away from that. We thought, well, this might be, this might be easy enough here, and let's play a little bit of too fast a start. Yeah. So I think um, Ireland would be a lot direct, and we're a good direct team. Sometimes we get criticised for not being more open, but I think if we're going to try and you know, there's a point in the game where you need to kind of impose yourself, and we we probably didn't do that for long enough on Saturday. But I don't have any concerns going forward on Saturday. Rob Carney comes straight in and fall back after that. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. It's it. Look, he's um, Jordan Larmour is a superstar at the moment, and he's such a talented player. But I think Carney's ability in the air is um, is something that New Zealand will test anyway. Even with Rob Carney there, and they'll they'll target Stockdale. Um, New Zealand kick a fair bit themselves, and um, so Barrett will look out for Stockdale and Earls and try and isolate them at times on Saturday. So it's. Um, it's, it's, it won't be any surprise, I don't think, that Rob Carney will come in. Is there any potential that the All Blacks were looking forward to the Ireland game a bit and that that's why their Definitely. performance against Both sides. England, the Twickenham, I guarantee was like... You. <laughs> yeah, so we, <laughs> we shouldn't be fooled at uh, thinking, oh God, England should have won and yeah. we beat England and you know this is going to be easier than maybe it has been. This team is not as good as maybe the team in 15 or the yeah. team in 11 that won World Cups. If you have a, that kind of an attitude, they won't, Ireland won't have that attitude. But I don't. I, I think we shouldn't create it either. Um, they were certainly a little bit off. They haven't. That group didn't play in two weeks. They were probably enjoyed the sight to London. Um, you know, they left Japan a couple of days before that test. So they've they've had kind of eight ten days um, in London. Um, Still not even a lot at full time. Of course, yeah. And it, look, they they you know. They played themselves into nearly losing. Before the way the game went, I suppose. Yeah, yeah but look, I think they were stupid twice. But yeah, they were. But New Zealand just have that ability. So we we've we suffered before in 2013. You think you, they're never beaten, you know? And, and and if you think that way and you relax any little bit, England were unlucky. I thought they should have won the game in the end. But then when you look back at the stats and the pressure, possession, line breaks, the offloads that New Zealand had, even in those wet conditions, yeah. they still. Like England brought a level of intensity that was real back to the wall stuff with their effort levels, and and sometimes that can win you games. And they were nearly rewarded. I thought Laws was just offside. I know yeah. again it's divided opinion. Yeah, even so, right? Even if he is just offside, is he clearly offside enough for the referee's opinion I, to be changed? He is. For me, he is. Yeah, there's a line there, and what happens in a rock, which some people are are, are not getting here is the rook actually got longer as the as the, yeah, the couple forward, of seconds went back. on. The New Zealanders stepped forward a little bit yeah. and there's clearly a black player and he's ahead of that black player. Now there's another argument to say the ball is out. I think he's offside and you're always running the risk if you're a, yard, a foot ahead of your, your your other players and he Laws was clearly standing a foot ahead whether he's onside or not. Uh, you know. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Maybe maybe, maybe he's offside, but you also have like a world class goal kicker sitting in the pocket, and you're playing the ball back and forth. Like, give your goal kicker a chance to kick the winning drop goal after you get the ball back. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they weren't able to do that. And um, but just brain dead. Yeah. It was a bit of game management there. And uh, and look, they'd be different as well. New Zealand. So. But I, I I don't think they were going into the English game saying, "Oh, the big one is next week." Because England is a massive one for New Zealand and it's a massive game for everyone when they play England. But I think maybe they were a little bit... Um, it, was a, it was a perfect result for them as well, wasn't it? They win the game, yeah. not playing as well as they would like to. Just, just on the, the refereeing call, I feel it's really split, this one. Like the, time, split, the, the London Times have a referee in there uh, going against what you're saying there, of course. It's, it's an English publication and all of that. We probably have the same supporting our cause it was in the Irish Independent or anything like that. I just wonder that if it's so split, how can we allow the TMO to overrule the referee when we're well, trying to empower the referees? It's a great point. Like, um, So we have a 50-50 call here that I think is 100% he's offside. Somebody else thinks he's onside. 
the re- some referees think he's offside, some think he's onside. So this is where World Rugby need to step in and say, look, having reviewed it, we're a meeting with some of the top referees. This is, is what, why, yeah. what, why, and how, and we believe it's a wrong decision or a right decision. Yeah. And then the public go, well, they've exhausted a kind of, they've had an inquiry. And we understand. To like, and it's been communicated. Yeah. That, like, that's the other thing. Yeah, but I think he didn't take control either, um, Garces, which is disappointing. And the new directives are he's supposed to dictate the topic of the conversation, whereas Marius Jonker, the TMO, was kind of giving him recommendations. He can see it himself. And he can even say, look, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? He, yeah. can, he can say yeah. that to get a bit of advice. But I thought he should have been more dominant there. But, you know. Was it Neil Tracy who was on Twitter saying that the best description he ever heard of whether or not a ball was out was whether or not if a bird flying overhead was to poo on the ball, does, the, does it land? Like, is, when's the ball out? The ball is supposed to be out when it's behind the hindmost foot as well. Right. So if it, it slips never behind the really, foot. It? Like, well, it's sometimes you see you now the way they're kind of... The referee goes, ball's out, because it's like... Yeah. Um, and, then, and and then the other side of the rock, it's the hindmost foot as well. But, like, uh, Stephen Jones made a really good point in the in the Times yesterday. He thinks it, it, it was okay. Stuart Barnes did in commentary. Some other guys think it was, it was, it was offside. That... You look at every rock in every game nearly now, and teams are kind of yeah. halfway up the middle of that rock, and there's a lot of it's only right, when they're really, really marginal ones. So if Sexton gets the ball and they pass and they play out wide, well, it could have been a penalty, but we're not calling that. Yeah. This play has gone on here. There was it's another only something affects if there's an effect. There was another incident in the very last play um, where one of the England players, uh, it might have been the scrum half, was tackled. He didn't have the ball. And he's like looking at the touch judge and touch judge yeah, like, off you go. Easily and been, that would have been a penalty. Yeah, it could like, have easily that, that, a penalty. Literally the last second where they're about to kick the ball into touch. But it's the All Blacks, so they get that decision because they get all the decisions. Well, England got one the week before, and all, to be fair. It did balance itself out, I think. It was beautiful karma. Um, I've got, I've got to ask you about the hack. I just want to play this quickly first. It's Joe Schmidt speaking after Saturday night's match. Have a look. I, I'd be delighted if we could be as competitive as we were the last three times we played them. You know, the fact that you know, the points differential between us is, is so narrow. The fact that in those three games, you know, that there was the one in 2013. Um, yeah, I am still bleeding from that. Uh, you know, it, it, it hurts when that happens. Um, and, and while it, Chicago was a great Band-Aid, and in fact, it was a full bandage, it was great. But, uh, you know, two weeks later, we, we were very, very much in the game and, and, it, was, and it was very tough. Very, very tough. You know, as physical as it was tonight, it, it was a step up uh, last time they were in town. So, you know, the challenge for our guys is, is to step up and you know, I, I'm confident that they can. And at the same time, I'm, I'm well aware of what challenge the All Blacks present. Yeah, so giving nothing away there. Um, I want to ask you about the hacker. Is it something players enjoy facing? Is it something that you kind of go, yeah, I want to see this, I want to get up there? Up close and personal, are you there in the back of that picture there somewhere? I was I was in front of a few of them anyway. <laughs> um, that's 2013, I think, is it? Yeah. Is that 13, that well, one? That's 08, apparently, you are there. Yeah, I was there somewhere. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it at that stage, because obviously you're a bit older, and, and um, I, I w- probably would have would have been a little bit nervous of it before. I stood in front of it a couple of times, but um, you just try and be respectful of it and, and block it out a little bit. Um, but I enjoy watching it all the time. And a few times I've kind of gone, geez, I lo- I'm here in front of it now. Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant because you watch it as a kid and all that. Yeah. Everyone, everyone, most people like to hack it. Um, it does give them a little bit of a psychological advantage. Um, I was disappointed on Saturday because I wanted to hear and I liked, I liked the hack it. Um, the English crowd were swing, singing Swing Low, Sweet Jordan. Chariot, Jordan. And it's just like... It's kind of like petty, do you know what I mean? Or oh, one side, oh, we we're going to drown you out and yeah, intimidate you. It's just people. Yeah. Actually, it's more of a show now, yeah. isn't it? Rather than it doesn't really. I don't. Does it have that much of a psychological impact? It it fires them up. You know what I mean? It's like screaming and shouting in the dressing room and kind of getting pumped up and the adrenaline up. It does give them a little bit of. So they're some people it. say it's an unfair advantage because we're standing around and. You have anthems and you're walking here and you're meeting the president and you kind of get a little bit cooler and the muscles relax a bit. Whereas this gives them this big kind of last psychological push where yeah. they're 
Um, but I think at the start I would have been a bit, a bit nervous with it, slightly. I remember though I played against um, Samoa in um, in '96. Actually, it was my first game for Munster in 1996 against Samoa and Cork, and they did some sort of a war dance, and I was like, Jesus! I thought they were going to come right up to us, you know. And if you remember, uh, two. Uh, Oh jeez, I can't think of his name. The winger that played for New Zealand, to to. Uh, oh, I can't think of his name. No, he played for Samoa and then played for New Zealand. The winger, he was your first big, strong, kind of powerful John Olomo type. Yeah. Um, and he was like right in front of me, and I was like, I was nervous with that one. All right, yeah, you yeah. know. But as the years went on, I think people more enjoy it now. I think so too. Um, we've another picture of you here tackling. Um, oh, or Dan, not? Or not tackling. Yeah, it's not really a tackle. It's kind of grabbing him around the back of the, the collar. That was in 2008. Um, He's just about to get the offload away. There's another Irish, Irish Yeah, it's Rog. Rog's hand there is... Uh, <laughs> I was on it. the inside trying to, trying to reef the ball out. Uh, but, yeah, he was a serious player taking it to the line. It's strong and physical as well, you know. That's in Lansdowne Road, is it? That was in Croke Park, that one. Okay, right. Yeah, that was in Croke Park. It wasn't close. It ended up being... 35-19 or something, was it? No, it was 23... It was pretty close. Nine or something like right. that, or 23 7, or. Um, that's the Irish marching up to them. Um, it was Willie Anderson, wasn't back it? Back in yeah. the day. Up to Buck Shelford. Far less intimidating back then, the All Blacks. They were what? Far less intimidating in that, in that particular picture. I think they were more intimidating back then because it was uh, they were rougher and more aggressive and stuff like that. There was no cameras. You do the hacker now, like you can't go up and box the opposition and yeah. lay tackle someone or the first kick off kind of march out and jump all over everybody. Well, you say that. The last time there was a game at the Aviva, they took the head off a couple of our players completely yeah. illegally and got yeah. away with it. Fekatoa and, uh, and Sam Kane and Robbie Henshaw and Fekatoa and, and Zebo, um, And we've exhausted probably the conversations around high shots nowadays and it, both those incidents would be probably red cards. Certainly the Fekatoa one, there's mitigating factors with Sam Kane's one that, you know, he was kind of launching forward and Robbie Henshaw spun around and Contact was accidental, but um, yeah, it was physical. That game two years ago was really physical, and remember they were on the back of we were on the back of beating them in, yeah. in Chicago. So, and I thought like that game was quite close in the end, um, but they kind of raised the level and, of performance a little bit, and and you know performed really well in Dublin. That's the thing about this week is when you think about the injuries that we've got, we're in proper World Cup mode. You might say that if we lose to the All Blacks on Saturday, it's like, ah, well, you know, we didn't have Gary Ringrose if he's if he's not available, or we, did, we didn't have Robbie Henshaw if he's unavailable, or say Conor Murray, or potentially Rob Kearney. But in actual fact, it's perfectly fair because we don't have those players. That's the exact situation we're likely to be in in 12 months' time if we get into the business end, if we get into a semi-final, or perhaps even a final of a World Cup. We are likely to have an injury list as long as we do now, if not longer. Yeah, every team has to cope, so and, and that's obviously, that was the big talk after 2015, you know, the players that were missing and not being able to cope. So I think there's a lot of depth in a lot of positions now. The obvious ones that you, you kind of go, you don't want to lose a Sexton and a Murray because they're, they're kind of, they're world class. Um, and the wor if you have world class players for big games, then you have a better chance of winning. Um, so it's, every team has to cope with it. I don't think this game is going to, it's not going to have any significance come World Cup next year. I think there's a massive determination from from New Zealand um, not to lose to Ireland again and kind of put us have stick a little psychological kind of hammer, give us a little psychological hammer blow yeah. to say, okay, two thousand two years ago, a bit of a shock. Don't yeah. kind of come into our territory again, and uh, you know, put you back in your box if you like. It was 21-9 the last time in Dublin. I'd forgotten that. Yeah, but did, did, they, did they score a late breakaway try? Was um, it was close enough, I think. Um, Brad Thorne scored a try kind of mid or late way through the second half. Um, so it was... Uh, yeah, and there were a lot of optimism for that game. So look, you play New Zealand and I think there's enough experience in the team on Saturday to know that if you're not right, if you're not on the money, they can blow you away. You could be 15, 20 points down in yeah. a 10 minute period. And they have that ability, and interestingly, Standard CJ Standard at a piece, and it was you know he was talking about at the weekend talking about ideally you'd love to be 14 points ahead because they have this ability of just coming back. They're 15 points down to England on Saturday. There's no panic. You're nearly 
guaranteed that they're going to score yeah. that try. They have a kickable penalty and you think some teams will say, bring it back to 12, maybe we'll get another one. We'll, 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 we'll wait for an opportunity. They kick to the corner and then they build the phase of McKenzie under the post. Then they, they, they get the penalty and it's, it's suddenly a five-point game, you know. Yeah, and you know what's happening at that point. Yeah. Are we going to beat them? Um, I always wait till later in the week uh, to see, see teams, teams and stuff like that. And you get a feel for where it's at. Um, Is Colin Murray going to play? I don't think so at this stage, no. I don't think so. I did think he was a few weeks ago. I thought yeah. it was a bit of a... But it's kind of gone forward and back now and they've drawn New Zealand in and maybe that was Joe Schmidt's uh, policy. So New Zealand don't know. We don't know who's going to start at nine. So will it make a huge difference? It'll make a difference that the player's not there because not just from the box kicking and his general play, I think when you have a Conor Murray who can make impact tackles on big, strong forwards. Yeah. He, he's a huge addition to you defensively and I just think the, 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 the way he covers in the back line and fills in. He beat him in Chicago, he beat him in the Lions tour, they know exactly who he is, they're like, yeah. you know, they, it's a, he's in their heads when he's taking the field in a way that no matter who else plays isn't. Yeah. Yeah, he's a great, look, he's, uh, I think he's, he's just so physical and they're a physical side who like to impose themselves. Very skillful side, side for sure, but... Um, he just makes so many t good tackles as well, and and he has that ability to 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 link up with players as well and score tries against them. You know yeah, that yeah. second that try you got in, in Wellington. Um, it was class. Yeah, it was yeah. in that second test. All right.